Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs. Now today's video is proudly sponsored by Sunken Ship Apparel. Sunken Ship Apparel is an Australian based clothing company. They print t-shirts and custom apparel using designs created by local Australian tattoo artists. This way they support the community of artists in Australia as well as provide you guys with some sick designs. Now I did recently do a commission design for these guys. You can see the design right here on a black t-shirt. This is the front and the back of the black t-shirt. And this is what it looks like on the green. Now they also have some other goodies such as stubby holders and some coffee mugs with the design printed onto it. And you'll also receive an artist card. So this has the featured artwork on the front and it's printed on some really nice material as well as all the information about me or whichever artist design you chose to go with. Now I would personally appreciate it if you go ahead and check out their Instagram and Facebook at Sunken Ship Apparel or go ahead and check out their website at sunkenshipapparel.com if you'd like to purchase one of their shirts. Just know that it is a custom, unique design that will not be reprinted and it is supporting Australian tattoo artists. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right guys, welcome back to the table. So like I said, this is a pretty special video. We're actually gonna be drawing the same or a very similar to design to what I did on the t-shirt for Sunken Ship Apparel, the sponsor of today's video. Now I've got an A4 piece of sketch paper and an A3. Uh, you don't need both. I just think it's gonna be easier to start on A4 and then transition over because we are doing something interesting with the skull portion of this. I have a pencil, an eraser, and a sharpener as usual. So to start this off, we're gonna draw our skull. And we're not gonna do anything special with it to begin with, we're just gonna drop in our skull shape. So coming in with a circle like this, finding a center line, this is gonna be sort of a three quarter view. And just dropping in a little curved line that runs around the top of our circle and then drops straight down the front like that. Okay, from here you can cut the sides of your circle off. This is going to give you the side plane of the face here, of the skull. So just cutting off the side areas of the face there a little bit. And then you can drop in a chin section like this. And just connect it up like that. Okay, that can come back and up to where the ear would sit. And in this case, our line's gonna come through this way and across the front of the face like so. So this would be our central axis on the side plane of our head. Now to start drawing in the details of the skull here, we're going to start with a circle where the eye sits, just underneath this eyebrow line. Maybe it's more of an oval shape, like an elongated shape. And the same for the other side. It's going to be a little bit shorter on this side. You're seeing a little bit less of that shape. Okay. Now the left side here needs to come a little bit closer to the center line than this side because uh, the bridge of the nose is going to be obscuring uh, this front portion of the eye. And now I'm going to split this to the chin and it looks in this case like my chin's a little bit low. So I might just bring that up a tad. Okay. I'm going to split that into half from this line to this line, and then split that into half as well, like this. And now it's starting to look like I need to drop that back down. So just playing around with the shapes to begin with here, just the guidelines. Now from this uh, first line here, we're gonna put in our nose shape. And to begin with, I just wanna put in a little triangle like this. And we can begin to sort of add detail to that. So from the inside, we'll come up and forward and then we'll cut back to the inside of the nose like that. Okay, that's gonna give us our general nose shape. Now from the outside of the face, I'm gonna come down from where the eye is, out, and then I'm gonna drop down and forward for our teeth section, which are gonna sit roughly here. I'm gonna add in a slight curve for our teeth, like this. The second row of teeth are gonna go just underneath it, and then that's gonna come out into our chin. Now on the outside edge of the chin here, we'll come out like this and sort of flick out a little bit and then we can drop it back. There's going to be this sort of bump in the center of the chin like this. And then I think I'm just going to cut it back and go around like this. So that's going to just give you that rough uh, sort of shape for your chin. Now coming up to the top here, this line is our eyebrow ridge. So just adding in a little bump for the eyebrow section and then we can bring that up and just follow our shape around for the top of the skull. Like 
this. This middle part's gonna be broken up in uh, very shortly, so don't stress about doing that right now. Uh, from here, I'm gonna drop in my teeth. So I'm pretty much gonna do these large oval shapes with flat bottoms to them. I wanna keep these teeth nice and simple, but this is like a more traditional style skull, a little bit less detail, and is a little bit more in line uh, with that traditional style. On top of that, we are going to be uh, splitting this skull and adding our clipper ship. So that it needs to be a little bit less detail uh, in your skull for this one. And this is gonna help keep it really simple in terms of shading and design as well. Now from the other side here, we're going to loop up from our teeth and come up like this. And then pretty much starting from here, I'm gonna loop around, come down to create the sort of cheekbone area. And I'm gonna come back and just add in this S curve at the end uh, for the back of the cheekbone section. And then to bring that up to the back of the eye, you can pretty much follow that back, touch to where the back of the eye is, and then come up and around like that. And that's gonna give you that sort of section, uh, the back of the skull. Now, if it's looking a little bit too narrow, you can of course widen it. That's gonna be a bit of a style preference and it's gonna depend on how you want things to look. Now to join the jaw up to the rest of the face, you can come down from behind the cheek and just add in this line, curved line that comes around. Drop your teeth into there to connect them up like that. And now from here, I like to double up on that line coming around. And then from here, this can come up and it needs to go behind this bone here. So I might even extend uh, that bone and maybe make the jaw just a tad skinnier in that area. So like that. And like that. That way the bottom of the jaw uh, gets obscured by that part of the cheekbone that's uh, coming across there. Now if you wanted to, at this point, you can go ahead and add in whatever other details you'd like. Just add in the back of the head here. All right, now before we split our skull, I just want to tune up the shape of the eyes a little bit. I want them to be a little bit more angular. So I'm just gonna bring them down like this and uh, play with the shape a little bit. And you can feel free to sort of do the same depending on how you want your skull uh, to look. Now, once you're fairly happy with your skull, the next step would be to split it in two. So the way we're gonna do that is just by adding a squiggly line that starts on our center right down through the middle, touching onto the nose there. And then I'll come down from inside the uh, nose section here, add in another squiggle between, uh, you can either go between the center teeth or uh, off to the side, that's up to you. It depends how much of the skull you actually want to show. And I'll split it off to that point. So we're just adding a basically long squiggle uh, through the inside of our skull. Now from here, what we're gonna do is take our design, place it underneath our A3 design and switch on the light pad so that I can see the design through there. Now I'm gonna drop my lighting back a little bit so hopefully you can see the skull a little bit better. And we're basically gonna find out where we want each half of the skull to sit in our design. So I think I want uh, one half of the skull to sit over here. And this is typically my method for drawing these split head designs, uh, whether it's a skull, or a honey mask. Now I'm going to follow that central line to begin with that we drew just now. And you can do this rough to begin with because we're still sort of in our sketching phase. And then follow the general outline of your skull shape. Again, you can be a little bit rough here. It's not important as you're going to add to it later. So I'm just tracing over the right-hand side of my skull and I'll show you guys uh, what we're gonna do in a second for the left-hand side. Now, once you've got your right-hand side done, you can move it and put your left-hand uh, side of the skull to the left, lower, and I like to drop it on a bit of an angle. This helps to sort of separate things even more and is gonna give us a lot more room to put our clipper ship in there. Now, this stage is really important that you get it right. You're gonna to need to know how big the design is that you wanna put in the middle here. So just make sure you sort of line everything up how you want it to be. And then you can draw in the left side of that squiggle. Now, once I've traced the left side of the skull, I will run you guys through doing the rest of it. 
All right, once you've traced the left side of your skull, I'm gonna come from the bottom portion of it here. And I'm gonna come up and back like this. This is gonna give us the inside portion of the skull. And this can pretty much come down like this. There's gonna be a lot going on up here, so you don't really need to worry about that too much. Now, in terms of actually putting the split portion in there, uh, you're pretty much just gonna double up on this, the curvy lines. Uh, you just gotta remember what direction you're seeing them from. So in this case, I guess I'm seeing them from the bottom. That uh, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line, come down with a wave to follow the line that's already there. And you wanna stay nice and parallel to these lines so that you get a nice consistent thickness like this. And that's gonna give you your split design. Now this looks super messy at this stage. That's okay, like I said, we're still sketching and that's gonna come a lot nicer once we've uh, done the done the clipper ship and the line work for this one. All right, with our brightness back up, it's much easier to see uh, without that light pad in the background. So I've got my basic design here and I've split the skull in two. So like I said, that's generally the method I'll use when I split my uh, heads for different designs like this, whether it's, like I said, an Oni, a honey mask, uh, you know, a geisha head if I'm doing Japanese style or a skull in this case. So it just depends what you wanna do, but adding that second line to the inside is gonna give it a realistic look like it's just cracked open or split in half. Now from here, we have to add our clipper ship. So I'm going to start with a line that is, it, some of it's going to cover this side of the face. So don't worry about that too much, but I'm gonna start with a line that comes around like this, just a curve that comes around like this for the sort of top of the boat that's visible. And that curve is going to come down and back like this. That's gonna give us the sort of base of our boat and underneath we're gonna do some waves. So don't stress about that underneath portion just yet either. Now I do find it helps to erase the sections that are covered by our ship. That's just gonna make the process a little bit easier for you guys to see. Uh, and maybe you'd like to follow along and erase portions of it as well. Now at this stage, I'm gonna select an area for the center of the boat here. That will be this sort of portion. And now we need to create, uh, I think it's called the mast or the whatever that thing poking out the front of the boat is. I believe it's a mast. So just a straight line up like this. And you can use a ruler if you really wanna measure this out or you can sort of eyeball it the way that I'm doing it now. Uh, you can use a ruler once you've got your basic lines in. Now the way that I like to do this line is create two angles or create an angle between these two lines. From there, I can drop this line and link it up with a curve in between like this. And that's gonna get rid of that sort of angular look. Now I can take the top back to about, I don't know, probably here like this. And then I like to curve this in and then follow along that center. And now from the other side, and if I erase this, you'll see this a bit clearer, clearer. And now from the other side is I'll come down from about here, curving out, and then curving back into center. So this is gonna create a center line that curves out like this. And if this is shaded a bit darker, it kind of looks like this is the peak or the middle of this uh, mast section here. Now in terms of detail for the boat, this is gonna be pretty simple because like I said, this is more of a traditional design. I'll add a curve like this across the top uh, part of the boat to create like a band there. I might add a second one like this, uh, which is just gonna be plain color, you know, a section of the boat that is painted. And then if you'd like to, this bottom section can just be wood. Now you can either do like a wood grain pattern like this, or you can just leave it as is. It depends how simple or complex you would like to make that part of your design. Now, before we go up top and finish off the boat, I'll throw in the finger wave section of this. So coming from this side of our skull, I'm gonna add in these little C-shaped curves. Now, if you're familiar with my channel and you've watched my videos before, you're probably already gonna be knowing how to do these finger waves. If you haven't, I do have a dedicated video for that and I'll leave a link uh, in the description for the finger wave tutorial. But I'm pretty much just doing these little finger waves coming around like this. 
And this is just going to help mask off the bottom of the boat there because it does sort of disappear into the skull uh, and that's going to help sort of mask things off. Now in this case I'm also going to do some small finger waves coming from this side of the boat. This will help obscure this side of the skull a little bit as well meaning you'll do a little bit less detail over on this back side and it's going to help push the front side out a little bit. Now in the inside of the skull here, I kind of want it to look like waves that are curling around and then crashing out with the boat, uh, similar to how I did the t-shirt design. So just doing some curved lines that come around into the shape of our waves like that. And you'll see once we shade it, uh, that's going to have a nice curved uh, crashing water looking effect. Now for doing the top section of our boat, this is really tricky to explain and quite tricky to do, but I'll do my best. Uh, let's say we've got a horizontal, uh, sorry, we've got a horizontal plane here. We're going to go completely vertical and then tilt it ever so slightly towards the front of the boat. And I'm going to go for the first one, probably about an inch back from the mast there. So just tilted forward and it's going to be quite long. I'll just drop in a line, move it over slightly and drop in a second line next to it. This is just going to give it a little bit of thickness. And at the very top, you can just cap it off like that. And for the second one, we're going to do the exact same angle, but I'm going to drop this back to nearly behind the skull here and drop it down by like just a little bit, like half a centimeter. Okay, so that's going to give us our, um, okay, now I think maybe these are called mast. I'm not sure anyways, but that's going to give us uh, our sections for our sails there to create our sails or where the, the poles that the sails are hung off. So the first one is going to extend to about just past the boat and it's going to sit fairly low, very close to the boat actually. So just dropping the horizontal line in for that one like this. And to link that back to the boat, come to the end of it like this and add a curve to where the boat is. That can come up and back down and you won't see the other side in this case. Now we can come up from there for our second one. There's going to be four in this case. You just need to make sure you've got your spacing uh, sort of even. The pole needs to be a little bit shorter than this one. So just come back a little bit, not too much. Like that roughly. And now you can drop out uh, your curves for this one. Dropping it down like this. And again, you're going to come up and around like that. We're not going to do the other side because you wouldn't see it. It's being obscured. Come up for your next one. And yeah, we're going to, looks like we're going to fit all four. So just keeping the angle consistent between them, dropping it back a little bit in length. And then you can add in the actual sail shape. In this case, you will see both sides like this. And then the last one at the very sort of top here, come up a little bit like so and drop it in like that. So that's going to give you the sails uh, towards the front section of the boat there. And now I just want to add my flag at the very top. Flag's quite simple. You're basically doing an S shape like this and another one just underneath it. And then from the one underneath it, you can loop back and into another S curve like so. Uh, I want this to flick more upwards. Nope. That's better. And now you can link the front with a curve, the back with a curve, and the front like that with another line uh, that links into it. And that's going to create your little flags at the top of the, um, the poles there. Okay, and you can make these poles a little bit thicker if you'd like as well. Now the other sails are going to be exactly the same as these ones. The only difference is you've got to do them behind these ones. So draw them in and then just erase what parts are not necessary. For now, we're just going to add the last details to this one and we'll skip through uh, for the next one there. 
So the last things we're doing for these ones is little dots across the front edge here. It's not completely necessary, but this will create a seam uh, where the sail is sewn and the pole is going through like a channel there. And that's just a nice little added touch of detail. Again, it's not 100% necessary. You don't have to do it but I think it adds a little extra detail. Uh, another little thing we can do here is just add in the ropes. Uh, so in this case, there's just gonna be some little uh, sections. We'll do a couple of ropes from the top like this. That's gonna go into three for the next section, four for the next section down, and five towards the bottom here. So it doubles in the amount of ropes uh, depending on how many sails uh, precede it. And the last sort of sail is actually gonna come out to the side here, and this is gonna be a folded up, I think it's called a brake sail. Uh, this is the sail that sort of helps the boat slow down and break, and so it's generally folded up and then deployed when needed. But I'm gonna do this on a slight angle like this from the boat. And then I'm pretty much just gonna do a real simple adding of little curves uh, in between bigger curves. Um, we'll come around like so. And that's gonna give you the brake sail off to the side of the boat there. And you can do more or less of that visible depending on how you want this to look. From here, what you need to do is draw in your other sails at the back here, but there are some sails in the front and these ones I find quite tricky, uh, but you're essentially gonna go from the tip of this section here at the front of the boat with a curved line to the very top of uh, this pole here, like this. And then it's gonna link back to the boat at about this point. So another curve, like this. And now you can link them up at the front with a curve like so. Now in this case, I think I've done that curve a little bit low. So that's probably going to be a bit better. These are those uh, four sails at the front of the boat. And I do want to erase this to give you guys some clarity here. Now there's going to be two similar sails to this one just behind them that link up to this second uh, section of the sails here. I'm going to start in the middle of my uh, mast here. I'll come back, skip a little bit, and then come into that central section. And that is going to drop down to about this point. So just behind the first one like this, and you can link those up in a very similar manner like that. And the last one is going to sit behind them and that is sort of the widest one. Comes up, links at this same point, and then comes back to about here, like this. And that's gonna come up and back down. And they are the sort of front sails of the boat there. Um, and you can erase everything inside of these triangular uh, shaped sails and that's really going to help you have a clearer view of your boat there Now we've pretty much got our clipper ship and split skull here Now the last thing I'm going to do to this one is add some floral elements to it I'm going to add some cherry blossoms uh, Just like I did for the design with sunken ship and you'll notice I did certainly leave some elements out of this one that were in that design That's just for simplicity's sake make it a little bit easier for you guys to follow and uh, you know draw along with so just adding in some circles and little petal shapes here for my cherry blossoms. All right, taking a look at one of these cherry blossoms, I'm pretty much gonna add another circle to the inside of our main circle there, like so. I'm gonna split our larger circle off into five sections. So one like this, split that off into five like this. Okay, so it's pretty much like the points of a star like that. And now in between each of these uh, lines, I'm gonna start at the base of the line. I'm gonna come out with a curve, touch back to my main circle, come back out. So this should create a V shape and then curve back around to join into my line. And I'm pretty much gonna do that for each section. Uh, splitting it up into five, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but you know, try to sort of get it as accurate as possible. That's gonna get you some nice evenly shaped cherry blossom petals. So once I've come around and done all five of my petals, the last one here, like this, 
uh, in between each of them you can just add in a little triangle shape that's going to create your leaf or your stem and that's pretty much it very very basic uh, around that inner circle you can do some little dots uh, that you're going to outline later on but that's basically it for the cherry blossoms for the individual petals you're pretty much just doing a cherry blossom petal shape like this basically the same as that but with a linked end to it very simple all right i'm going to finish off the cherry blossoms for this one and i'm going to transfer it to some watercolor paper and i will see you guys for painting Okay, our design is transferred to watercolor paper and it's ready to paint. So we're using Liquitex acrylic inks today, solid carbon black for our black shading. I've got yellow orange azo plain. This is brown, which is a mix, four drops of yellow orange azo to one drop of dioxazine purple. Or if you've got brown, you can just use brown. Phthalo blue, I've got sap green, and I've also got pyrrol red. So we're going with a pretty traditional color palette for this one. I've got uh, two brushes. This is my inking brush and my blending brush. Taclon Synthetic number five and number six. And just some water for blending and to wash out my brushes here. So I'm gonna start off with the black shading like I always do. And if you've already seen the design, maybe on Instagram or on the t-shirt design uh, that I did, the style of shading I did for that was very different. Uh, it's more sort of a graphic style of shading used for creating t-shirts, especially with screen printing styles. Uh, in this case, we're painting this more in a traditional tattoo manner. So black shading to start this one off. I'm going to come in with my solid carbon black and we're always going to go from black to shade. Now I don't always do that, especially with traditional designs, uh, it's traditional Japanese designs I should say. But with these uh, more American traditional style designs, it's really important that you always start from black. Uh, you go from black and then to gray as your shade color. So once we've laid down some black in the back of the eye there, I could feather out that edge gently and begin to blend that down into a gray. And then I can work that gray into more of a light gray and eventually just into the white of the paper there. So that's gonna be how we're going to shade our eyes for this one. We're gonna do a same technique uh, on the inside of the mouth or a similar technique here. Just get a little bit of the black off my brush. I feel like I've got a little bit too much on there. And blending out and down. Uh, now for this bottom section of the jaw, I'm going to flip this page around a little bit and this is going to differ slightly from how I did it in the uh, original design, but I'm essentially coming from the back of the jaw here with a bit of black and just leaving a slight gap or a skin break at the back there and then blending that out and forward. Just feathering that edge and then gently blending that out. Now, when I say gently, I just mean you're uh, trying to get a nice smooth blend by going nice and gentle with your brush, nice even strokes. So you're not really rough with the, uh, with the tip of your brush. That's gonna give you these real uneven looking strokes. You wanna go nice and smooth and slow. This way you get a nice even transition from black to gray to white there. Now from here, it's pretty much a simple matter of finding all the little nooks and crevices of your skull and then adding a little bit of black to sort of help add shadows to it and give it a slightly more, not really three dimensional, but a shaded look. This way it doesn't look super flat. Although with this traditional style, uh, the designs do tend to have a flatness and a sticker look to them. And that's sort of hallmark of this design. So. I wouldn't stress too much about trying to make this look 3D or something like that. It's hallmark of traditional tattoo designs to be a little bit more sticker-like, a little bit more simple if you like. Uh, in the back of the skull here, there's a big crevice. So I'm going to fill in that nearly the entire space with black. Coming up like this. Around to the top like that, following the shape of that area. And then I can feather out that whole edge and gently blend it through. Now I'm also going to do some black shading off the base of the skull here. So just coming in with my solid black like this off the back of the skull or the base section of the skull. And I'm going to bring that quite high, like just above that cheekbone section. 
and then I can turn my page and just feather that out and blend it around. Once you've done those areas of the skull, we can start on our boat. Now I'm going to flip this guy around just to get a better angle on him. And I'm going to start sort of towards the base of the boat here, just working in between my uh, finger wave sections there. And adding a little bit of uh, our black as I move forward. And this very base part of the boat can be quite dark, so don't stress too much uh, about getting a real light shade on this. This can be a quite a dark section. And I want to make sure I leave just a little bit of a gap between the top section and the bottom section there. Now I can come in with a bit of uh, water and just blend that out. Give us a nice smooth transition of uh, grey. And you can come in from the other side and do the same. And make it sort of curve around in that direction. And then take a bit of water and feather it out. And then just work on blending that up and through for that section in the middle that sort of strip in the middle of the boat there and you can do the same thing coming from the center section across to the other side now for those little loops in there i'm going to do those solid black so just taking enough black on your brush that it saturates and then coming in and filling in all those little loops with solid black you could of course do this with your lining nib when you uh you know transfer it to watercolor paper um but I forgot to do it. So just coming in with solid black for these. Uh, you know, using a paintbrush too will give you larger coverage. For the mast section here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of black to the back corner. Not too much, just a tiny, tiny bit. And then blend that out and forward, following the curve of the mast there. And you can add a little bit to the other side if you'd like, just towards the top uh, where it joins into the center line and then blend that down. Now before we paint the rest of the sails, let's just come down into this section of waves here and paint that in. So you're pretty much gonna start black at the bottom like so, and then take your blending brush and very gently just blend that up towards the line, making sure you reach white before you hit the line. Uh, in, in the larger blocks, you want them to really, really hit white before the line. So make sure that you don't oversaturate your black in these areas because we're gonna use a little bit of blue here as well. And if you oversaturate them, your blue won't show up. So a bit of black towards the base of that wave there. Coming in with water to blend that out. And I'm really just feathering these out. I'm not blending these uh, sort of all the way through to white in most areas, just feathering them out from black. Now for how to shade the sails here, first we're gonna come in with black uh, for these front sails and these are all the same you're going to go with black from the front edge of these like so and there's a bit too much black on my brush there but from the front edge you're going to come up with black and then feather out and blend back gently nice long smooth movements for that one for the next one down same thing going black towards the front and you know, there's gonna be a little bit of black visible at the back there, just a touch. You really don't want there to be too much there. So just a little bit of black and blending back. And then this front one, you're really gonna just have solid black uh, for a lot of that. And maybe a little bit working back through there, but pretty much not, not visible shading, just coming back behind there. That's gonna give you the shading for the front sails there. And the rest of your sails are gonna be using the exact same method. So I'm just gonna run you through one of them and then I will speed run uh, through the rest of them. That way we can get through this painting. So for these sails, you're pretty much gonna come up from the bottom edge, follow the line on your bottom edge with a little bit of black and it should get slightly wider towards the middle like that, ever so slightly. And then you can feather out that edge like so, and then just gently blend it up the sail. And that'll give the bottom edge of your sail some shadow, just like so. And you're gonna do that for each and every sail on your boat here. Now, once all of your black shading is done, coloring is very simple for this one. It's very uh, sort of traditional in style. I'm gonna go in with my pyrrol red to begin with, and there's quite a bit of pyrrol red in this one. So I like to start with my sort of 
uh, main color or the bulk of my color. I'm going to start by going into the eyes and that's going to go straight up over our gray shading like this. And then if you'd like to, it can go on top of the black shading or you can gently blend that out into the black shading. This is going to give you a nice uh, harsh transition between the black and the red. Really traditional looking. You can do the same thing for that section on the inside of the mouth. And again, this is an area where my design changes from the initial uh, concept that I did. And that's just to sort of, like I said, bring it through to a more tattooable style. Now other areas of red are gonna be on the boat here. So coming to this second band or stripe on the boat, straight over the top of my black and my gray shading there and towards the front of the boat. And I'm gonna have this diagonal cutoff point there where I'm just going to blend my red forward. That's gonna give it a bit of a highlight towards the front of the boat. You can pretty much do the same thing off the other side, adding your red straight over your blacks and grays leaving a bit of white and blending it forward for a bit of a nice looking highlight point on that side of the boat there. And in this case, you can shade them or blend them, but these are quite small. I'm just gonna do them solid red in this case. And I think that's gonna work well enough for this design. And it would work well enough if you were tattooing it as well for these to be solid red. They generally wouldn't be too big. Uh, maybe if you were doing like a big back piece or something on someone's torso, Maybe you want to add a little bit of black shading to these, but at this size, I think I just want to do solid red for them. You're going to basically do solid red like this for the whole petal. And when you're doing it on the flower itself, you can do solid red from the top to match your petals. But just as I get down to the middle section, I'm gonna very gently blend that out so that it transitions smoothly into the center of our flower. So that's basically how I'm going to paint the cherry blossoms. Now, once you've done all your cherry blossoms, we can go ahead and wash our brush out and go into our brown. Now, for this brown, we're pretty much using it for the main section at the bottom of the boat there, and also for the, uh, fla the poles that are holding up the uh, sails or the flags. So coming up with brown, again, straight over the top of your black and your gray shading. It will show through because it's a darker color, so don't stress about that at this point. Bring it right up to about there. Again, cutting it off and adding in a little highlight just by blending it forward. Now this uh, brown does have a little bit of a yellow tinge to it, and that's because it's a mix of yellow and purple but you could of course use whatever brown you'd like if you don't uh, like the yellowness that this has. Work with something else. Completely up to you. Blending this out for the other side to get that same sort of highlighted look. And now I'm gonna use uh, that same brown color to do the, uh, the poles in the back here like this. And at the very top as well. Like that and for the back one as well just in the couple of areas that it is visible once you've done your brown we can go in with our sap green and there's only sort of two sections for this there's this front top section of the boat that is going to be sap green and because we've already done the black you can literally just go straight over the top of it and fill this area in solid I'm not really gonna blend this area at all because it's got those large black archways in it. So just going in with solid green uh, over the top of it. And once that dries, your black will show through the green anyways. Now the other small amount of green is gonna be in the cherry blossom leaves. So you pretty much just work in between your petals. There's no very specific way to do this and there's no shading involved. I like to keep the leaves on these guys quite simple, especially with a more traditional style nice and simple and bold. Uh, if you're doing this in more of a neo-traditional style, maybe you want your cherry blossom leaves to be more detailed, but uh, this is, like I said, more traditional style. So just nice and simple, solid green. Now I've washed my brush out and there's two more colors to go. We are nearly there. We're going in with our yellow orange Azo next, and we're just using that for this center portion of our 
boat here. Like I said, I think it's called a mast. Uh, we're basically going in with that straight over the top of our black shading and no blending on this one, just straight down uh, for the color, just straight flat color for this one. Like so, and that's gonna stand out and be nice and bold. And then the center of your cherry blossoms need to be yellow as well. So you can pretty much just paint a solid yellow circle in the middle. Sometimes if it's uh, you know, a little bit more detailed, I will blend out my yellow from the center, you know, get a nice fade on the edge. In this case, keeping it uh, again, simple and traditional, just a yellow, big yellow circle in the middle of your cherry blossoms is going to be just fine. Now the last color we have to do is blue. So I've just washed my brush out and going into my phthalo blue. This is a fairly dark and rich blue. I'm gonna come down into our waves here and follow our shape around for that last one. I'll just leave a skin break. Come up over the top of my black and gray shading for this next one, like so. And then for the top of that wave, you can pretty much just gently blend your blue up into your white there to get a nice smooth transition. Pretty much what we're doing uh, throughout this whole illustration with our black shading and everything. Uh, so working into this section here, gently blending it up towards the line, just making sure that it sort of reaches white before it hits that line. And you can basically do that for each section of blue here. Now to do the actual finger waves is really simple. I'm gonna start in the back where I've got a little bit of my black shading that I applied. And I'm gonna just drop some blue towards the back of my finger waves, like this. Get a water, start blending that blue forward. And then you can just sort of streak it in between the fingers of your wave there. Just by pulling it forward like that. It's a really simple way to do it, but it looks really nice, it looks pretty clean and just gives it a nice overall uh, look with the blue there. Now here's something important to mention on the original design behind the uh, sails here is black, right? Because it worked well for the t-shirt. In this case, I don't wanna lose all of my detail uh, in the back here. So for behind the sails there, I'm just gonna add a little bit of red, pretty much the same way what we did in the eyes. And I should have done this earlier, but I almost didn't realize this until uh, this point of the illustration. So just adding a little bit of red from the uh, right hand side where the skull splits off. And then gently blending that across. It's just going to give us like this gentle red glow from that side uh, of the page. And that's going to help fill in that background section just a little bit so that it's not empty and white there. And uh, this way we don't have to overcrowd that area with uh, black and you know lose all of our lovely detail there you can just pop in a little bit of red to sort of help separate things from our page a little bit and you could use that red glow even more throughout your design if you wanted to especially in giving this a more traditional look now that is basically it for this design guys i really hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned something and i really hope you guys give this one a go it was a lot of fun to do like I said, this was the t-shirt design that I submitted to Sunken Ship Apparel and uh, they decided to sponsor this video, which was super nice of them. And uh, yeah, go ahead and show them some love. I'll leave a link in the description to their website and their social media profiles so that you can pick up this design if you would like. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button and hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.